This is a story of survival, despite the odds. Two years on after the Wakashio MV oil disaster in Mauritius and an unprecedented rescue mission to save three species of reptiles from extinction, we find out what has happened since. Being on these islands for... At the time, a team led by Nick Cole, the island's restoration manager for Durrell in Mauritius, with the Mauritian Wildlife Foundation and the government's National Parks and Conservation Service, and forestry service risked their lives to collect as many animals as they could from the oil-saturated islets. They have dedicated the last 16 years to rebuilding three species of reptiles that are close to extinction. What I faced when I came to the coast and looked across to Illus Gret was an absolute shock. It was heart-wrenching to see this beautiful blue, turquoise blue lagoon just black with oil. Louis Pierre, whose family flew the reptiles to safety during the COVID pandemic to Jersey Zoo, is taken to see firsthand the impact that the oil has had on the Southeast Islets. At the time, Louis Pierre flew with his mother Natalie and monitored the temperature for 12 hours to give them the best chance of survival. I was so stressed. <laughs> And I thought, you know, the, I'm not going to be responsible for an extinction, you know what I mean? We talked to Laval Bangard, who has lived on the island of Mouchard Rouge all his life. Je pas aspirer ici. Respiration coupée. Dans la maison même, c'est invivable. Je pense que c'est un malade terrible avec tout le petit crap in mode, tout les affaires in mode, tout ça, tout ça. And Nick Cole, Natalie and Louis Pierre travel to Jersey to see the reptiles and the captive breeding program. This is phenomenal. This is amazing to see. Much. So many tubs. The pristine waters of the Indian Ocean, just off the coast of Mauritius. This unspoilt, unique marine environment is home to more than 1,700 species many of which can only be found on the main island and its surrounding islets. It's the habitat of the threatened lesser night gecko, Bouton skink and the Bogers skink. It's now 2022, but exactly two years ago, on the evening of the 25th of July, the MV Wakashio oil tanker ran aground two kilometers from a very important island called Illa Zagret, a nature reserve that holds unprecedented biodiversity, not only for Mauritius, but for the region of um, the Southwest Indian Ocean. What unfolded over the days and weeks that followed was devastating. The ship broke in two and a thousand tons of toxic oil poured into the ocean. The oil-soaked sea spray rained down on the southeast islets, including Ile de la Paz, Ile Vacqua, Ile Fouquet, and Ile Marianne. It was the worst environmental disaster in the history of Mauritius. Mais lui là, passé à côté de l'île là, quand le wakasho a cassé, est brisé. Toute l'huile est descendue près de l'île, tout tout tout. Seeing all the scenes of people helping and, and scooping up the oil and just, it was devastation. It was horrible, horrible. On the 7th of August, nearly two weeks after the shipwreck, the Mauritian government declared a national emergency. Thousands of locals did what they could to fight the fuel, their livelihoods, had been decimated. Wakashin fait bien des autres. La vie est changée depuis Wakashin depuis pareillement longtemps. My immediate thoughts were we need to bring some of these reptiles off of the islands to capture their unique genetic diversity because if we lost these animals from these islands, that's it, they are lost forever. 
all this effort that we've put in for the last 16 years in restoring these communities could be potentially undone in a blink of an eye. It was really emotional time and just being on the island was almost unbearable. The stench of the oil was just burning our noses, our mouths, getting headaches, but we needed to try and do what we could for the island. It was a huge risk for us because we thought, what would happen if this oil caught a light? The days were long. At times, it felt desperate. Just catching them out of these tubs is hard. Nick and his small team awake for 20 hours a day, looking after the reptiles in his house, which he had made biosecure to protect them. He did everything he could, but he could only do so much and time was against him. He was running out of live insects for food. With only a week's supply left, Nick knew he had to get them to safety, where they could be looked after and bred for the long term. Yes, I could potentially hold them for a month or so in biosecurity, but the resources that we'd need for the long term care and the professionalism required, Jersey was the only place that potentially could do this. We knew we could help, but that meant making a decision about removing some animals from the southern islands. So, of course, we worked with the government of Mauritius and our other partners in Mauritius to say, can we do this? And if we're going to do it, we need to do it really, really quickly. We'd just come out of a very severe COVID lockdown. The number of flights leaving Mauritius were very, very few the complexity of getting everything organized to export animals out of the country was just so, so difficult to even comprehend. And I asked, can Jean and Natalie Ball, could they fly to Mauritius, collect these reptiles and take them to Jersey? We thought because I have such a love for animals and involved in conservation that we needed to do this, especially for Mauritius. It was a 12-hour flight, and every 10, 15 minutes, we were looking at the, the gauge on the temperature. Too much, too little. I mean, it was a lot of pressure. I was literally with the temperature in my hand for the whole journey. Yeah. Just kept looking. I would tell the captain, it's too hot, it's too hot, you know. Bring it down, bring it down. It's too cold, it's too yeah. cold. But so I remember when you told me, the temperature has to stay exactly within this parameter. I was very nervous that we'd gone through all of this, we'd rescued these reptiles, we'd kept them safe and healthy in Mauritius for a period of a month, and then we could potentially lose them all in the flight going to Europe. Once we landed, we were handing over this precious cargo. It was a relief. The anticipation is killing you, he said, so I thought you can uh, witness the unboxing of Mauritian reptiles in Jersey. Yeah. So futons will be at the bottom of that crate. Yeah, he's well and kicking, running around. It was really difficult not to cry, basically, because everything had been building up to that point. I hadn't had a moment to stop and think, and it all went so, so smoothly with a 100% success rate with every reptile surviving. Once we'd got the reptiles safely to Jersey Zoo, we needed to then monitor the Southeast Islets. And this is done in collaboration with the Mauritian Wildlife Foundation and the government's National Parks and Conservation Service. What we've found so far is that there has been changes in comparison to extensive data that we have prior to the oil spill. August the 4th, 2022. Nick Cole takes Louis Pierre back to where this story began, to the Southeast Islets. So it's been two years since the oil spill. Are there any visual uh, markers of, of the disaster remaining on these islands? A lot of the areas where the oil actually came up onto the island in a big, thick slick uh, is areas that these reptiles utilise. And they were showing really strange behaviours that we'd not seen before. Very slow, sluggish and very easy just to pick up, which mm. was very unusual. 
And so, of course, this all just rings <laughs> alarm bells for, for us in terms of what impact mm -hmm. it potentially had. All this should be living and it's died following Wacashio. It's all died. Really? And what we've seen after Wacashio is a big decline for the lesser night geckos on this island. And tell me, what exactly about the oil is it that affects the skinks? Is it the fumes? It's most likely for these islands is that the oil, this oil particulates, get into the soil. It then comes up through the invertebrates with the reptiles being mostly insectivorous. Mm -hmm. They're losing their food resource. You know, when they were in the box, I never saw them. Uh, did you not? No, of they course. were in the box. Oh, it was yeah, uh, it wasn't transparent, yeah. At least. So, so finally seeing one yeah. in, in the flesh. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to release it. He likes you a lot. <laughs> I'm flattered. And we can actually show you the reptile room. Yeah, right I there. can't wait. Uh, yeah. I can't wait for Borders are open once again and COVID restrictions have eased, which means Nick is finally able to travel to Jersey to find out how the reptiles are doing and see their progress first hand. No, this is my favourite place. Your favourite place in the zoo. It's the warmest place. <laughs> And here it is, the high-tech, very special Mauritian Reptile Rescue Room. Awesome. It's absolutely yeah, awesome. Yeah, so many tubs. <laughs> so many tubs of reptiles. Now our challenge, of course, is to manage them into the long term. That's whilst it. Whilst the land recovers in Mauritius. This is our lifeline. <laughs> wow, Kieran, this is quite a change from Two years ago, these reptiles were in my, or some of the reptiles were in my spare bedroom. <laughs> all in tubs, all in biosecurity, but this is phenomenal. This is amazing to see. Some of these will be the ones that you would have caught up yourself and brought over, and yeah, some of them yeah. are the ones that you would have never met. So uh, I'll introduce all you the to some of those now. Yeah, it'd be great to see, but so many mouths to feed, eh? So luckily we breed our own insects here. Yeah. They do eat a lot. Uh, we've got about 14 of the youngsters that we weigh and measure every month. Uh, the animals that we brought over originally, uh, we had eggs laid by them a month after they arrived, so they clearly weren't too traumatized no, by the long flight happy. from Mauritius. So, you know, they're, they're really happy, they're thriving. Kieran, I'm so pleased, so happy to see all of this. A massive, massive thank you to you and the team. Natalie and Louis Pierre have also been able to make a visit, exactly two years since they touched down in Jersey with the reptiles. Well, you know, it's honestly breathtaking to be in here and to see the progress and little guys who've just been proliferating thanks to all your hard work it's and Matt's emotional. hard work. Yeah, It's very emotional. Natalie and Louis Pierre Bull if they hadn't stepped in when they did with uh, the plane to get the reptiles here, that would have been the end of the story for us because we didn't have enough infrastructure in Mauritius in terms of captive breeding infrastructure to be able to do the work there that we do here in Jersey. So the fact that they were able to say, we can offer you this air transport, we can bring them all the way to you, all the way from Mauritius to Jersey via London, was pivotal. I think it's absolutely remarkable what the team in Duro are doing. Thank God we brought those skinks here. It's evident that they're doing okay and at some point in the future we can return the species, all three of them, back to Mauritius. In the face of such adversity, what has been achieved over the past two years has exceeded all expectations. But this is far from the final chapter of the story. Throughout the captive breeding program, genetic material has been taken as samples from the reptiles and sent to Cardiff University. This research is critical to the species' future. At the moment, we don't know how long we have to hold this population until we can return species to the wild. So we need to make sure it uh, is as diverse genetically from that original genetic material as possible. And that's where our colleagues at Cardiff are being um, amazing in terms of helping us really understand what is the genetic history that we have in this population. 
coming here and seeing the passion and seeing the expertise and seeing this state-of-the-art facilities, I couldn't be more optimistic. I've got huge confidence for the future of these Southeast Island populations and for these threatened species as a whole. Beaucoup de gens ont disparu. Après, si tu es maintenant, si tu es avec toi, comment ça va venir? I know that there's a huge amount of work to be done and we need to continue to act and there's always more we can do.